with calf tail. The wing was calf. And what was the, uh, what was the disappointing <laughs> thing about calf tail? It, it was creating a very bulky body. That was point one. And another thing was, when I was fishing and I got the fish, the fish took the fly down. I was playing a little while with the fish and the calf tail get waterlogged. So every time I cast the fly, it sinks. So, so that's why I changed very quickly to, to the poorly arm. And, and as a lot of people have no clue about the poorly arm, but I was extremely lucky because, I mean, there was a lot of Swedes who coming there, but those Swedes that went to America and they brought back to the fly fishing shop there, the pulley on and the fly right dubbing. And, and that was something like, it was so special. But in combination with the uh, deli wax, it was the perfect, the perfect thing, you know? Because pulley on is lighter than water, so it floats in the surface. But polyon absorbs water like crazy. If you make a pellet or a piece of polyon and you drop it on the water, it falls on the water and directly within a tenth of a second, it soaks into the water film because it absorbs the water so quickly and then it, it hangs in the water film because it's lighter than water. And then you know, this is the right polyon. And all the strategy about my flies are based on that, that technique because what happens is, if you use floated on the polyon, it happened exactly the same. The polyon absorbed the polyon, of a, the polyon absorbed the floatant and get waterproof. Yes. And yes. I can fish the yes. whole yes. day yes. with yes. one fly. Of course. Yes. Of course. Okay. Yes. And that's the trick. And yes. so if you if you use different stuff as polyon, like Antrom or other other floatant, or other other wing materials. The, the people, uh, they use it because they want to try some other materials. You damage the, the strategy, my thoughts, behind the fly. Because what mm -hmm. not many people know is that what we say, I, I love a little bit, 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 bit uh, safe, like 80% of my clink hammers float on the wing, not on the hackle. Because this is all beautiful small hackles. But if I use of uh, small wings, but if I if I tie for wild water, like for example this one, is this one is for the rapids, and then I double or triple the amount of wing material. So I take instead of one string of polyon, mm -hmm. I take two or even three, and with my salmon fly like this, it's four strings of polyon, mm -hmm. and this one is floating 100% just on the on the polyon. Not had nothing to do with the hackle. Yeah. And, yeah. and and that's that makes what, sense that makes sense you know so so a lot of people have and this is the same when I secure um, secure the the hackle after I finish with fly tying mm -hmm. I use a, a varnish applicator you ever heard about that varnish applicator it's a it's a it's a little uh, tube with varnish in it with a needle on it and you, you squeeze the varnish out. And I put that on the windings. So I squeeze it in the, in the, in the peacock hole and it get absorbed by the polyon and, and the hackle never get off. Mm. So that's all, it's all a, a special way of, of doing. It. So you, you just gotta have a look. It's amazing. It's all different, different ones. This one is for salmon. This is for wild water. This is the one with calf tail. Some red one, some one with uh, with make Thomas Olsen made. He designed exactly the same fly as the clink hammer, without a wing. So this is the same like my caseless caddis. My caseless caddis never made it in the, in the world. Everybody knows the caseless caddis, but they all know know it as a Polish nymph or a Czech nymph. Because when I published the the, the caseless caddis in '91, I published it in the Fly Versus Guild. One year later, you had a Polish nymph, and one year later, you had a Czech nymph. And there were just copies <laughs> of the caseless cats. And the Czech nymph made it all worldwide, but the caseless cats did it. Yes. And this is the same with Thomas Olsen fly, and this is Roy Richardson's fly, who, who designed exactly the same fly as the Klinkhammer. The only difference was a tail. One year after I designed it, without knowing each other. Yes. So he deserved, actually, 
as much credit as I did because in this time there was no internet. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what I write in my book and in my stories. I try to give the credit to the people who also deserve it. Because uh, a lot of people, they steal all things and they claim it's mine, 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 you know? It's the same with the shuttlecock. It's nothing else than a once and a way. Same fly, yes. different name. But the once and a way, nobody knows once and a way, but they all know the shuttlecock. Mm -hmm. It's the same fly. You know, so that's, that's, and everybody knows the cling Yes. And you know, even in Japan, they can't pronounce the cling That's why it's <laughs> successful. <laughs> successful. Yes. You know? Well, yes. that's just a little bit of background, right? How to pronounce in Japan, clink hammer. Clink hammer, yeah, they do it. Clink hammer. Clink hammer. Okay. Will I do a lecture about the uh, clink hammer? What's that tomorrow? We will, we will say, put the